Hi, everybody, and welcome to Computerized Quilting on a Domestic Machine. For today's presentation, if you have a question for the presenter, please type your questions into the chat box on the right-hand control panel. We'll have a question and, question and answer session at the very end, and we'll get to as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Uh, we do have one handout available. It's in the control panel as well. Feel free to download that now. Uh, it's a few of the presenter slides, so if you'd like to take notes, if you're not able to download the handout, it will be available on Bernina.com in a few days along with this presentation. If you're viewing on an Apple product, your screen might look like this. To view the presentation or the speaker, you have to either swipe left or swipe right, as you can see on the bottom. The questions mark button is where you are going to input your questions and the handouts are located in the more section. You experience audio or visual technical difficulty during the webinar, Please exit the webinar, close out your internet browser, relaunch it, and re-enter the webinar. Most problems can be solved by doing this. Uh, also, the webinar series is being recorded, so not to worry if you miss a couple minutes or if you have a doctor's appointment, things like that. Uh, they'll be available in a few days. You'll get an email when the selection or the sessions are available. So I'd like to start today's session. We're going to welcome Connie Fander. She's the manager of Bernina Embroidery Products here at BOA. Hi, Connie. Good morning. Hello, Emily. And it's great to be with everybody here this morning. So would you? All right. So I will take over the uh, screen and uh, we can get started. So. To begin with, I do want to thank all of you for joining me today on this webinar. And let me have a minute here to get this going. Okay. So I do welcome you to our webinar series on computerized quilting with the domestic machine. I do have four inspiring webinars to share with you today. And uh, the first webinar at the end of this series, you will be ready to uh, use your embroidery machine as an additional method for quilting your quilts. So this is webinar number one in the series of four webinars. So in this first webinar, oh, hang on here, I'm having just a little difficulty. There, now I'm set up and ready to go. So in this first webinar, we will discuss the computerized quilting process We'll be selecting the best designs for the embroidery project that you're going to be doing. We're going to talk a little bit about the Bernina Quilter program and the Bernina machines that are compatible with computerized quilting. So let's get started. So let's first begin by taking a look at machine quilting options that are typically used when quilting projects. So the first option is simply to straight line quilt using the walking foot or the Bernina dual feed. Now, some people do prefer lowering the feed dogs and doing free motion quilting on their quilted projects. And now we are seeing many quilters using ruler work techniques. And all three of these techniques can be done on a domestic machine or a long arm machine. And then we also have another method, which is for great precision of quilt designs. We do have long arm quilting with automation. And in quilted projects, we often see one of these techniques or a combination of these techniques used. However, there is one more technique that is available to anybody who has a domestic machine with an embroidery module, and it's computerized quilting. With computerized quilting, you can easily quilt designs. You can do them very easily and precisely, just as we do with our long arm quilting systems with automation. So computerized quilting can be used to quilt an entire quilt, or it can be used in combination with free motion, straight line quilting or ruler work in order to quilt your quilt. So let's go through, first of all, a few examples of how you can combine two or more quilting techniques in a quilted project. So in this stacked coins pillow, I combined straight line quilting using the Bernina dual feed in the white strips, and then I used my embroidery machine and the computerized quilting techniques to do the strips. In this second quilt, the beads quilt, I embroidered the quilt design in the beads or the circles of the quilt, 
And then I filled in with free motion quilting to give it a lot of texture and dimension to the quilt and to the negative spaces of it. And then on this chevron quilt made from Tula pink fabrics, I embroidered quilt designs from Tula's embroidery quilt collection and finished the quilt with ruler work on the long arm machine. And I just followed the chevron pattern of, of the quilt. So as you can see, adding computerized quilting with a domestic machine as one of your quilting techniques that you have in your quilting toolbox, it does really open up a lot of creative possibilities for quilting your projects. So now let's talk about the computerized quilting process because it really is quite simple. Let me take you through the steps. So the process for computerized quilting begins just like it does with all quilts and you baste. The next step is to secure all of these layers which is followed by hooping the quilt. Next, it's time to start stitching. I do like to begin uh, stitching with my largest quilt designs first. And then if there are secondary or medium scale designs, I will stitch these next until all of the designs are embroidered. The last step is to fill in with free motion quilting. Now, when planning the quilting on your quilt, the end goal is to have the same density of stitches throughout the entire quilt. So let's take a closer look at this process. So as I said, the first step is to simply base the quilt layers. You base the top, the batting, and the backing all together. There is no stabilizer that is used when you are computerized quilting. Basting with safety pins is my personal pre preference for basting. However, you can base the quilt your preferred method. <clears throat> The next step is to add additional securing of the layers. And what this does is it prevents any shifting of the layers while you are hooping and re-hooping the quilt. And then in my case, it allows me to remove the safety pins so I don't have those in the way as I'm re-hooping. Now the securing stitches can be permanent or they can be a part of the quilt you know, permanently or they can be the basting stitches that are removed after the designs are embroidered. So the method that you choose is dependent upon the quilt and how you choose to quilt it. So you need to think through the process to determine what type of securing stitch is best for your quilt. So for instance, for this particular stacked coins pillow, I used Bernina dual feed and I stitched in the ditch along the strips first for the securing stitches. This then held all the layers together when I went to my next step of embroidering the quilt in my embroidery machine. And then these securing stitches, of course, were permanent and a part of the pillow. On the beads uh, quilt, I also secured with a permanent stitch, and I chose to do a free motion stippling stitch around the area that the embroidered design would go. So what you see pictured in the center image there is actually the back of the quilt, of course, and I did use a white fabric so you could easily see the stitches. And you can see how I stippled around the bead that will be embroidered to just hold everything in place. Now, another option, as I mentioned, is to machine baste the layers. The machine basting stitch is then removed once the quilt is complete. Now the stitch I use for basting is the basting stitch, which is number 21 on most Bernina machines. This stitch will take a stitch every fourth stitch, producing a long basting stitch, which is very easily stitched and very easily removed. Now in this quilt called Faded, I use the basting stitch stitches to establish divisions in the negative space and then I place the embroidery designs inside the basted boxes. Now for the chevron quilt, I basted the straight lines every six inches, and this securely held the layers together and again allowed me to take out all the safety pins so that they didn't interfere as I was hooping the quilt. So now these basting stitches, I do get a lot of questions on, you know, what stitch is this and how does it work? So I do have a video here to show you of how this basting stitch works. So let me open up my videos here and uh, play that for you.
To do a machine basting stitch, you will begin by selecting stitch number 21. Once there, you will adjust the stitch length to your desired length. The longer the length, of course, the longer the stitch. Here I have adjusted it to a stitch length of six. The machine will stitch every fourth stitch, which makes it very quick to sew and very easy to remove. Here you can see my stitch length is about 7 eighths of an inch in length. Okay, so that is the basting stitch that I used to do the basting on my quilts that I wanted a temporary stitch. So after you baste and then you secure your, uh, your quilt layers, the next step is to hoop, hoop the quilt. And to hoop the quilt, you need to do that in order to place it, of course, on the embroidery machine. And when hooping, you hoop the layers and no stabilizer is needed. You just simply slip it in the hoop and you are ready to go. Then the next step, once the fabric is hooped, is to stitch the largest designs first. Now I am often asked, where do you begin embroidering? Do you begin on the edge, in the middle, on the top, the bottom? Well, the answer is really dependent upon the quilt and where the embroidered designs are going to be stitched. In the color chart quilt pictured here, the computerized quilted area is the border. Therefore, after the securing stitches were stitched, uh, where the per after the securing stitches were stitched, and the securing stitches I did on this quilt were the straight line quilting, which is in the main body of the quilt. So after I had that completed, I did embroider the border, and which of course is the outer edge of the quilt. So in this quilt, my embroidery started on the edge of the quilt at the beginning of the border. Now, when we look at the next quilt, which is the X's and O's quilt, with the quilted feather wreath design, after the securing stitches, I started in the center of this quilt. And I started with the center with the large design and then I worked my way out. So then after the large designs are complete, then you will stitch the medium scale designs or this uh, stitching of the secondary stitches of ruler work or straight line quilting. Now for this chevron quilt, I embroidered all the Tula designs throughout the quilt and I used the computerized quilting technique for that. After they were complete, I did put this quilt on the long arm frame to complete the uh, ruler work. And then for the ruler work, I just simply followed the chevron design of the quilt. Then the last step in the process is depending upon the quilt, you can add free motion fill stitches. And on the first X's and O's quilt, I used free motion stitches to fill in the border. And on the beads quilt, I used free motion fill stitches along the string between the beads. And then I used it around the embroidered flower. So you can see the process for computerized quilting is easy and it gives you another option for quilting your quilts. So now that you understand the overall process, let's go into a bit more detail and talk about embroidery designs. So whether you are using the computerized quilting technique to quilt the blocks, the borders, or the negative space, there are a couple things to look for when choosing a quilting design. And the most important tip that I can give you is to purchase quality designs. So start by asking your Bernina their recommendation, your Bernina dealer their recommendations. See what continuous line quilting designs they have available and determine if that is what you need for your project. Now, if you do need to look forward, my recommendation is to go to embroideryonline.com by OESD. They really have an amazing selection of designs for quilting and I am always confident that these designs are digitized beautifully. The OESD digitizing team always makes high quality designs and I know that they will produce an excellent stitch out. So once you log in to Embroidery Online, how do you find the designs? Well, I simply go up to the search box and I type in quilt. 
And this searches for all continuous line designs that I can choose from. Now to narrow my search, uh, one person who does some designing of designs that I really like to use is Amanda Murphy. She has a, a wonderful selection of embroidery designs for quilting at embroideryonline.com. So to narrow my search for quilting designs, I will type Amanda Murphy in, this, in the search box, and this will bring up her quilting collection series. She has designed 12 collections of quilt designs, and in the quilts that I have used for this webinar series, I have used many of Amanda's quilt designs. Now, not only are these quality designs, but if you happen to have any of Amanda's quilting idea books, you can use them as a source of inspiration because many of the designs featured in these books were actually ruler work, she has digitized for the embroidery machine. And her books give you ideas and suggestions on which designs work in different types of blocks and borders. So now throughout this webinar series, I will point out which collections from OESD embroidery designs that I have used in the different quilts. Okay, so now we have our design selected, what do we do next? Well, after you find your design, I really do recommend to audition it to make sure it is the best design for the space and your project. And really to see what the stitching sequence out, it excuse me, what the stitching sequence is. So let's talk about why this is just so very important. So first of all, in the beads quilt, I was looking for a design that was circular to fill the string of beads. And I saw this design that I have circled here in the Tula quilting collection. I first thought, well, this is just perfect. It would give a nice dimension to the beads. So I decided, thank goodness, to make a sample. And like I said, good thing I did. As it ended up, I did not use this design. In the first test sample that I stitched, I reduced the size of the design to fit inside the bead. And after I stitched it, I realized I didn't care for it because it clearly shows that the, my bead that I had pieced is not a perfect circle. So I had to try again. So then I decided to enlarge the design. So the outside of the design was slightly larger than the bead. Now I did think this was better, but it still didn't give the dimensional effect that I was looking for. Therefore, I started looking for more designs and I looked at Amanda's designs actually for some other options. As I continued to look for designs, I really did find a lot of choices, but I didn't really wanna go back and stitch all of them as I did here. So if you feel the same way and, and you wanna try the option that you just don't wanna stitch them all out, there are some other ways that you can use for auditioning the design. And one option is to print a paper template that is cut out of the design and place it on the quilt. To do this, you can download a free Bernina Art Link software from Bernina.com. And you can open the design in the software, you can resize it to the size that you need, and simply print out a template and place it on your quilt. And this will really give you a pretty good idea of what the design will look like in your quilt. The next option is for those of you who do have Bernina Designer Plus embroidery software, because included in our embroidery software program is the quilter program. And this program allows you to design your quilt and even scan in the fabrics of your quilt if you choose. So for this beads quilt, I used the Kaleidoscope collection from Alice and Glass, and I scanned all the fabrics in so I could see exactly what the finished quilt would look like. Then to take it a step further, you can insert the quilt designs you would like to audition. So here you can see in the quilter program, I have inserted the Tula designs that I referenced earlier. But after determining this was not the best design for my quilt, I tried a couple other designs. So again, here's what it looked like with Tula's design. And then next I auditioned a hexi design, which I felt was a little bit better, but still not exactly what I was looking for. Then I tried a design with a flower in it from Amanda's collection number nine. <clears throat> Once I saw this flower in there, I knew it was the one I wanted to use. 
I really like how it gives the beads an orange peel effect, a little bit of dimension and a little bit of whimsy. Now here are some more examples of embroidery designs that I did audition for the projects for this webinar series. For the chart quilt, I did audition two different borders and I eventually decided to go with the one on the right. And here just are a couple more samples just to give you an idea of what you can do in this quilter program. The quilter program is really very easy to use and doing this really helps to visualize what your final quilt is going to be. So then the next thing in auditioning the design is to look at the stitch sequence or how the design is stitched out. So some things to consider are, does it have tie in or tie off stitches? Where does this design start and where does it end? Is it one continuous line of stitching? Are there jump stitches? Is it a single stitch design or a triple stitch design? <clears throat> a little time spent looking at these things will really save you a lot of time um, in the end, and it will always give you a very successful stitch out, which results, which gives you the results that are very similar in comparison to what you can get with long arm quilting and on a bit with automation. So let's, let's go through those, those points and uh, talk about what we are to look for when we are um, looking through the design sequence. So when looking at the sequence, the first thing to consider is the tie on or the tie off stitches, or in other words, the securing stitches. Depending upon the person or the company that has digitized the design, the design may or may not have securing stitches at the beginning and the end. Also, depending upon the person or the company that digitized the design and the quality of the design, the securing stitches may look very nice and hardly visible like you see in the first sample here, or it could be just the opposite and um, it's a very thick and a heavy securing stitch. You need to watch for this as you are stitching out the design. You also need to consider if you even want the securing stitches or not. Perhaps you prefer not to have a securing stitch so you can tie a knot and bury the, the thread ends to make it completely invisible, like I have shown in the second sample. Giving the securing stitches some thought is important in perfecting your quilting stitch. Now we will talk more about uh, securing stitches in a few slides and also in webinar two. So the next thing to look at in this uh, stitching sequence is to look where the first and the last stitch are in the design. And this is particularly important with borders or edge to edge designs, as typically you want to match the last stitch of a design with the first stitch of the next. You also want to ensure that a continuous line quilting design is, is one that will stitch the entire design without stops. And you want to make sure the design that you have chosen to stitch this way, because you don't want to deal with jump stitches or more securing stitches than what is needed. Then the final thing to watch for um, in the design is, is it single stitched? or is it triple stitched? A triple stitch is a stitch that is stitched over three times. So uh, the way it is formed is it will take two stitches forward, one back, and then two forward again. And what this does is it produces a heavy thread appearance that will stand out nicely and it will make the focus of the design uh, on the design rather than on the fabric which is appropriate for some projects as you see in the pin cushion here. However, a single stitch is typically what we will see in machine quilted quilts, like in the X's and O's quilt. Either stitch is really fine to use. It is your choice according to your project in the quilt, but I mention it to make sure that you're aware that the designs can be digitized either way. Therefore, you do need to check the design first to make sure it is what you want for your project. <clears throat> so now what happens if the design that you choose is a triple stitch, 
like this one from the Tula collection, and you want it to be a single stitch for your project. Well, for those of you who own Bernina Designer Plus software, it's really quite simple. You can, in the software, change a triple stitch to a single stitch or vice versa. And that is actually what I did with the designs in this chevron quilt. I went to the Designer Plus software and changed the triple stitch to a single stitch. Now I do have a quick video again to show you how just a couple of stitches or a couple of clicks can change a design to a single stitch. So give me a second to get, um, get the video going. To change a triple stitch to a single stitch, go to Settings in the top toolbar and select Object Properties. This opens up the Object Properties dialog box where you can select the Outline Stitch tab. Select sing Single Stitch and OK. And your design is now a single stitch. Okay, so you saw how quick and easy it was to change that design from a triple stitch to a single stitch. Now, do notice that there are some areas that are stitched over twice, such as the eyes. So this is a design, uh, uh, this is so that the design that is stitched in a continuous line and there is no jump stitches, and that's what you want. If it wouldn't have you know, backstitched or done another stitch over those eyes, then we would have had jump stitches to deal with. And that is not what we want when we're doing the computerized quilting. Okay, and so now you can see there are several things to check for in an embroidery design that you choose to use for your project. To audition the design and check these things, you can stitch it out or as an alternative, you can watch it in simulation of how the design will stitch out using the free Bernina ArtLink software, which is that download from Bernina.com. Or if you do have Designer Plus software, you can use this as well. Both softwares do have a stitch player, which does allow you to see the simulation of the design stitched out. Now I have one more video here to show you uh, this morning that will show you how the simulation of the stitch works and what it is you need to look for as you are uh, watching the simulation. So let me play the third video here. Bernina has an embroidery software program called ArtLink, which is a free program that you can download from Bernina.com. And within this ArtLink program, there is a feature called the Stitch Player, which is indicated by this icon here. Now, once you select the Stitch Player, the Stitch Player toolbar opens up. And on this toolbar is where we can speed up or slow down the stitch pattern or the stitching of this design as we watch it. So now we have our Stitch Player open. And now let's look at our embroidery design. And one thing we want to do while we're watching it simulate the stitching is we want to watch for the starting point and the ending point to see if there are tie-on or tie-off stitches at the beginning and the end. Now the beginning of the stitch is indicated by the green circle and the end of the stitch is indicated by the red plus. So I'm going to zoom in to uh, the start of this design and then I'm going to go up here to the stitch player and I'm just manually going to go stitch by stitch and watch how this design is stitched out and as I click it is taking one stitch at a time and there was no back stitching or tying off of this starting of the stitch so right now, I do know on this particular design, there are no securing stitches at the beginning. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the stitch player on and we can watch the rest of the design stitch. And what I'm watching for is to make sure that it is a continuous line. 
that there is no stops or jump stitches in this. So when I'm quilting it, it is going to stitch in one complete pattern. Another thing we can see is it is doing a straight stitch, but it is stitching back over some of the stitches in a, the feather, which is actually typical for a feather pattern, whether you're free motion stitching it or you are using an automated pattern of this design. So now we continue to watch the design stitch, and as it gets close to the end, I'm going to again turn off the stitch player about here so that we can then watch it do its final stitches and see if there is a securing stitch at the end. So I'm going to go stitch by stitch and right here I'm at the end point, but it does take three more stitches over the previous stitches and then three more stitches back. So at the end of this design, this particular pattern does have the securing stitches at the end, but not at the beginning. So this is good information to know as you go to your machine to start to embroider this. In the next series of webinars, we're going to talk more about these beginning and ending stitches and how we can change them if the digitized pattern is not exactly what we want for our quilt. Okay, so you can see by watching this simulation that the design, um, it, it is quick and easy to uh, watch the, to audition the design and watch the simulation. And this really helps to narrow down your selection of stitches so you can choose that perfect stitch for your design. Okay, so now another question that I do get frequently asked is, does my machine do this? And if you do have an embroidery machine, then the answer is absolutely yes. You can do the computerized quilting technique. But depending upon the size, the editing, and the positioning features you have on your machine, this technique can be either easier and stitch with more precision, um, but, but stitching with continuous lines is something that can easily be done on any embroidery machine. So if you're interested in a new embroidery machine, let me quickly review the Bernina models that are currently available for this computerized quilting technique. So we do have the Bernina 880 Plus, which is our top of the line and largest machine. There's 12 inches of space to the right of the needle, which does give you the capability to stitch up to a nine and a half inch square block. On our seven series line, there is three machines that are embroidery compatible. It's the B790, the 770, and the B700. The B700 is a standalone embroidery machine, which means it is dedicated to embroidery and it only embroiders. And the really great thing about this machine is that it uses the same embroidery module as the Bernina 880, 790, and 770. And it's a great companion machine to them because you can keep embroidering on the 700 while you still sew on your other machine. All seven series machines have a 10, inch, 10 inches of space to the right of the needle and it will stitch up to an eight inch block. Then we have the five series machines and there's four in this line of machines or this series. We have the B590, the 570, the 535 and the B500. Like the B700, the 500 is a standalone machine that uses the same modules as the other five series machines. There is eight and one half inches of space to the right of the needle, and you can embroider up to a six inch block. Then we also have two embroidery machines in our Burnett line, the Burnett 70 and 79. The Burnett 70 is a standalone embroidery machine, and the Burnett 79 is sewing and embroidery combination machine. There is nine inches to the right of this needle, and they will embroider up to a six inch block. Now in the following webinars, I will be referencing different features and then I will point out which machines in our current line um, do have these features. 
And then one more thing I would like to add is that really an added benefit of our eight, seven, and five series machines is the jumbo bobbin. And to me, this makes a huge difference when I'm computerized quilting because this jumbo bobbin will hold 70% more thread. Therefore, I don't have to change that bobbin hardly at all, really, when I am quilting my entire project. So this is definitely a benefit for these machines and the computerized quilting technique. So this wraps up webinar one. And before we go to questions um, and answers, please don't forget to join me in webinar two, which we will talk about stitch perfection. And in this webinar, we will be discussing the quilt stitch. We'll talk about thread, needle, bobbin case, and batting options that are available. We're going to discuss how to achieve a balanced tension and the options for securing the start and ending stitches of the quilt design. We're going to talk about a couple embroidery features on our machines called Smart Secure and Invisible Secure, and also the Designer Plus. And using these features are going to help in aiding us get a perfect quilt stitch. So Emily, I'm going to turn it over to you and see if there are any uh, questions that I can answer. Hey, we do have a lot of questions, so I'm going to get through as many as I can. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Can you use the walking foot for basting your quilt? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And somebody really liked the pins in your first couple of slides and they want to know what kind of pins are they and where can you get them? Pins, you mean the safety pins? Yes. Oh, you know what? And I don't have one right here by me. And actually those are just covers that I you clip onto your safety pins. And I did those years ago. Uh, I'm not even sure the source of them right now. We'll have to get back on that one. I'll try and have that by webinar two. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. I find that it is very tight to get the quilt into the hoop. Can you give any suggestions? Yes. And how to um, your quilt to get it in there. Yes, and actually that is something that we're going to cover in webinar three. And I will be going through all of the hooping techniques and how I set up my machine and the area for quilting. Because the, there are some tips and tricks that do help in getting that set up. I have a 780, can I do computerized quilting? Absolutely, yes, it's a wonderful machine. My machine only has a four by four hoop capability. Can I still do machine quilting? Yes, you can. Um, you'll just have to be rehooping more often is, is what you'll be doing. And as I said, I'll show you some hooping tips in uh, webinar three, and that will help you along, but you can absolutely do it with the smaller frame. When auditioning a design by stitching it out, are you doing that on a sample block or actually on your quilt and then taking it out? No, I do a sample. <laughs> I, uh, you know, if you're brave, yes, you can do it on your quilt, but I personally, the ones that I've stitched out, I just do it on a sample. Yeah. A lot of questions. Thank you everybody for sending in wonderful questions today. Uh, what size is your favorite hoop to use on your machine? Well, it depends upon which machine I'm at. <laughs> and uh, actually, most of the samples that I did uh, for the computerized quilting technique, I did use the 790. And so I use the maxi hoop for that. Um, this will give me up to, you know, by the time you hoop it all, I do get an eight inch block in with this. Um, but I also do like to use an 880 because the 880 will even give me the larger one and I can use, I don't know if you can see that all, you can use the jumbo hoop uh, with the 880. So that's my personal preference, but you know, you have a lot of options. Sure. The next question is, how do you determine if basting stitch should be vertical or horizontal or both? Again, that really depends upon your quilt. And uh, 
For instance, if you remember the uh, faded quilt, it was the blue quilt that I did. Um, the basting stitches were a grid. So I did both horizontal and vertical. And then I used that grid, those stitches uh, made to place my designs. But then on the, the chevron quilt, the tulip pink quilt, I did all of those going vertically in my quilt. Uh, so you just have to look at each project and determine what is best. But to me, there is no right or wrong uh, direction, horizontal or vertical. Okay, the next question is, we had it right here. Uh, when using stitch number 21, your basting stitch, do you need to change the pressure foot pressure to keep the layers going under the feed dogs uh, evenly? I did not. Um, I did. Uh, I was on a machine that does have the Bernina dual feed, or as somebody asked earlier, the walking foot. And uh, if you use either one of those, those are going to move your layers evenly for you. And uh, I did not have to change the, the pressure. Okay. And okay. How do you position the quilt to prevent drag? Do you use any other aiding device when your machine is stitching if you have a large quilt? Okay. And we're actually going to talk about this too in the second webinar. And uh, we're going to talk about battings and um, uh, again, how to set up your machine. But um, the drag, if I'm doing a larger quilt, and I'll mention this in the next webinar, but like the one behind me, the color chart, this is a 60 by 60 inch quilt. And um, if you're doing something larger, what I recommend is to use a lighter weight batting. And that for one is going to decrease the weight of the quilt and move easier when you are embroidering. And uh, doing those things, I did not experience any problems with drag. I also too, in my cabinet, I did have the extension up. So that also supported the weight of the quilt. But other than that, I did not uh, need anything else uh, to do the quilting. Sure. Uh, we had one question about uh, spray basting. Um, People wanted to know, do you use spray basting? Do you just use it on the inside to aid a little bit and then pin as well? You know, that's a personal choice of what you want to do. I personally uh, don't do much spray basting, but that doesn't mean you can't. Uh, I do, as I said, I prefer doing the pin basting. Um, I guess that's just what I've done and I've, I've just gotten the habit of doing that. But you can, if you prefer to spray baste, you can do that but then still go to your machine and do the securing stitches, whether it's a permanent secure or a temporary basting stitch. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. The next question is, is it possible to use, use the hand look stitches? So I know uh, when you can hand quilt your quilt, is there any stitch that might look like that or is there a way to get that desired stitch look? Yeah, that would have to been done in the digitized design. So, um, and quite honestly, that's an interesting question. I'll have to start searching for designs now that would be with that hand look quilt stitch. Uh, I really like that idea. But so far, the stitches I have used are either a straight stitch or a triple stitch. And to have that happen, it would have to be in the digitizing of the design. To, to have that hand look, yeah. We have time for just a couple more questions. Okay. And let's see here. Uh, what needle do you recommend for doing your quilting in there? In this, uh, in okay. <laughs> I keep, feel like I'm uh, putting you guys off to watch the next webinars because I do cover needles in the next. Everybody <laughs> is so excited, right? <laughs> Everybody is so excited. <laughs> Yeah. I'll go ahead and tell you though. Um, I do, uh, I, I actually tried and experimented with several needles, several threads in doing all of these samples. Uh, so really every sample is done with pretty much something different. Uh, the one that I found that um, I liked for, you know, just a, a regular batting and you know, nothing heavy is I use a, a size 75. I do like to use the quilting needle. 
and then a 50 weight cotton thread. But again, we'll, we'll cover more of those tips uh, in the next webinar. In your basting slides, we have a couple people who want to know what foot did you use to do your basting stitch? Is there one that's recommended? I have to think. I think I had the 37 foot on, the 37D for the uh, dual feed. Uh, so that, and that per, foot worked perfectly fine because I was just doing a straight stitch. Uh, you could use your 34D would also be fine because you could really see where you're going with that as well. Um, the main thing is really to either use the dual feed or to do a walking foot. Yeah. Okay. So that about wraps up our uh, question and answer session. A lot of the questions are going to be answered, I believe, in our afternoon session. So I hope I see that everybody's excited about those topics. Uh, Connie, do you want to wrap everything up today? <laughs> 